What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there? This is a quick overview of the BIOS. <clears throat> On your left, we got Ryzen. I dropped a dog tag. On the left, we got Ryzen. On the right, we got Intel. This is a Haswell E processor, uh, 5820K, 6 core, 12 thread. The Ryzen 1800X, uh, 8 core, 8, 16 thread. And this is the first BIOS. Uh, this is BIOS 0502, and for the 5820K, this is BIOS version 3402. And I want you guys to see what I'm seeing. They both have the same, uh, almost the same cooler. The new cooler for that I purchased for the Ryzen is the H100i V2, and the old cooler has the H100. And you can see the temperature on the left hand side is 40 degrees Celsius and the temperature on the right hand side is 34 degrees Celsius and uh, what concerns me here is kind of interesting is the voltage on both the CPUs the voltage on the left for the 1800X is 1.4 volts and then the voltage on the right is 1.0 volts and I'm not real familiar with overclocking a whole lot, so if anybody can give me a heads up with this, this is the original BIOS. Um, I haven't updated it yet. I heard some negative stories about it. I haven't heard uh, about updating it, so you guys let me know in the comment section below about what you are concerned about if you was to have this processor. Now, <clears throat> being that that said, also got here uh, a red indicator on one of the chassis fans. It says, uh, I'm not exactly sure why it's red. Uh, none of the other fans that I have on the other computer are red. So that, that's, that's a concern that I'm not exactly sure what to do about. But you can see that the one on the right is 34 degrees Celsius and the one on the left is 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, the, <laughs> the Ryzen has a R9280X and the Intel has an R9390 graphics card installed so I don't think that would have anything to do with the CPU so let's go ahead and test how long it takes to boot into Windows the Ryzen has a uh, Evo 960 SSD Samsung uh, NVMe SSD and the uh, Intel has a Kings Kingston HyperX um, SSD and it's pretty fast. Uh, I like the Kingston HyperX a lot. Uh, it's a SATA drive. This is an NVMe drive. It's straight up hooked up to the PCI Express lanes and this one runs off of SATA. So it's, you know, in, in comparison, the data transfer speed should be dramatically slower on the Intel side. And I'm going to go ahead and load default settings by pressing F5 on both keyboards. All right, so load, uh, optimize default on both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK on both. At the same time, we'll see what it does. All right, now we're, we're gonna go ahead and click F10 for save and exit. So I tried to do a auto tuner overclock with the random access memory, didn't work out. And uh, this had previously had a overclock on the RAM. And what we're going to do is go ahead and press enter on both. All right, so I press enter on both of them at the same time identically. And the uh, old cooler, the Corsair cooler, the H100, is incredibly loud. But the H100 uh, V2 is nowhere near as loud. Actually, you can't even hardly hear it. So, I mean, everything is booting directly out of uh, BIOS. You know, restarting and booting with uh, saved optimized results. It's apparent that the left one already started to boot. 
and the right one is now already in Windows almost. So, and there is passwords, I apologize, so. So, the right side, the left side got done faster, it booted a little bit faster, so. All right, so it took, uh, you know, five, six seconds for the, the other drive to uh, boot faster. And we're going to do some benchmarks real quick comparing apples to oranges, something with eight cores versus something with six cores. This is clocked stock speeds. The RAM is at stock speeds. You can see that our uh, core is at uh, 3,692 megahertz. And this core is at 3,300 bench CPU, okay? So bam, we're gonna start that. And currently they're both at stock. This one is saying 1,600. This one's saying 2,280 uh, for the single core. And you can see on the right, we're looking at 10,300. And on the left, we're looking at 19,000. 250. Now, this is Cinebench, and we're going to run both of these at the exact same time, so let's start. So we're complete with a score on the CPU 1610 and uh, that is comparing the ranking at uh, you know 12 core 24 thread Intel Xenon processor um, X5650 which is a 12 core processor and its score was obviously higher because it completed the job faster. Now this score right here is comparing with also a 12 core 24 thread Xenon processor and it's shouldn't actually even compare. I mean the Xenon processor should chew through that stuff pretty you know quickly. <clears throat> so basically what we have uh, done we did some tests with Cinebench and some other benchmarks and what's important to me is to find out what's going to work best for my applications. And for my applications, uh, I'm having un overwhelming success for editing uh, speeds compared to the previous one. Uh, it's not up yet. I'm not making videos on actual editing, but it's apparent that it's much faster. I, I will do some in the future. That way you guys can get an, an additional amount of information. I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, I'm curious why the Intel processor runs at 1.0 volts and the AMD processor runs at 1.46 volts. I mean, and this is at totally stock settings, nothing special. Is it my BIOS? Is it what? I don't know, but I really do want to know. And I don't understand, 1.4 volts is supposed to be really high and really bad. So let me know. This is Philip Chorney with Solar Power Electricity and the Electronics. And I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Hello, lazy to get gentlemen. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.